So next up, we have lists. So a list is essential in HTML. We use them for a lot of different things. One in particular is a navigation bar. Those are made up of unordered lists. So to define a list, we'll start with an un unordered list. So we have two types, unordered and ordered. An unordered list is the tag UL. And then we have list items for each individual item in the list. We can define that LI. So item one, and we can do another one, item two, another one, item three. And you will notice that these are bullet points because it's an unordered list. Now, if we were to do the same thing, but ordered, we get numbers and now it's ordered. And you can also do nested lists this way too. So in this list item here, if we do break this like this, and then another unordered list, li drop down one, li drop down two. We'll see, we kind of get a nested uh, list here. Then we can add a item one back. There you go. The next tag is a line break. So say we have text like this, and we want to put a break in the middle here. Well, by hitting enter, that won't do that because browsers don't care about the spaces. They just look at this and it will see this as this. So to put a break, we can use the tag br break tag. Now we'll put a space right there. We can put one in between here too. And there you go. That's breaks. And you'll notice that when we use tags like P or H1, it puts breaks for us. So we don't have to actually specify those breaks each time. It automatically does it. If we added this, it would just add another break. All right, so this is everything we covered so far. You can see we have some comments, we got our header tags, paragraph, links, images, buttons, lists, unordered and ordered, and the line break. Now the next thing we're going to look at are inline styles. And inline styles are a way that we can go about styling some of these tags a little bit. So we can change the color, the font size, uh, stuff like that, make it look a little nicer. So say we want to change the color of this h1 tag. Just like this is an attribute for an a tag and an src is an attribute for image, we can, an attribute for, for every tag is style. And you'll see there are a bunch of different things that we can choose from here. So let's do color and then make this blue. You'll see we just changed this h1 tag to blue. Now we can also change the font size. So let's change this font size to be bigger than h1. We can do that with the font size and we'll do 50 pixels. Boom, there we go. H2 is now bigger than H1. Now we can combine these in the same one by, by doing it like so. Color, blue. Oops. <clears throat> Space, font size, 50 pixels. So now this H3 will be 50 pixels and blue. And you can do that as much as you want. Another common style is the text align. And with this, we can align it center, left, right, and a couple of other options that we'll talk about later. So if we do center, you'll see this H4 is now aligned in the center of the page. Change it to right, put it over on the right, and the default, as we saw, is left. Let's keep that center for now. Now there are some ways to format text directly by using tags. So for example, if you want bold text, we can use the tag B. I am 
bold text. And this will make the text bold. Now, as I mentioned before, you can actually wrap tags, right? So we can wrap the bold inside an h1 tag. We can make that h1 bold. Another way to define bold is by using strong. So these two tags, B and strong, are the same. Next, we have italic. Now, again, there are a couple different ways to do italic. We can use the I tag, and we can also use the EM tag, which is all which is for emphasized. And these are the same. Next, we have the small tag. This is used for small text. Okay. You see, it's pretty small, a little smaller than paragraph. There, there you go, that's a comparison. And here are some other ones that you can play around with if you like. Deleted, inserted, subscript, superscript, and marked. Next up is a block quote. So if you have a quote for somebody, you can wrap that in a block quote tag. I am a quote. And it will give it some formatting. See, it puts an indent there. All right, next up we have the form tag. Form tag allows us to get input from the user. All right, there's the tag. And inside it, we can put whatever we want. So first thing we'll do is a label tag. This takes in a couple attributes as well, but for now we're going to skip that. We're going to write name, and then we're going to write input box. Let's type this text. We don't need these right now. And there you go. Name, text. Users can now input some name. Next up are radio buttons. Now to make it a radio button, we can change the type to radio. And there you go. Now we have a button that we can click. Now with the radio buttons, you only want the user to be able to select one of the two. And you'll see here that you can select both. So to fix this, we're gonna use this name tag. And by giving it the same name, radio, that will tell the browser that these are together. So it will only let you choose one or the other. And just like we did for up here, we can add a label tag to give it a label. Next up is a drop down. So for this, we can use the select tag. Again, this takes a name. So for example, we can say languages, Oops. languages. And then we can put in options. So option, let's say Python. We'll say HTML. CSS, and we'll do Java. And now we can select a language from the drop down. And you can use the selected property to select one at the beginning. So, for example, if we make CSS selected, when you reload the page, that will be the first one, even though it's third in the list. And last but not least is text area. So this is to be used if you need a large input. And you'll see the user can type a big, a lot of stuff. And here is an example form of all the tags that we just learned. And you'll see by using line breaks, we are able to pretty nicely format this form.
last but not least, are semantic tags. So semantic tags are just tags that have meaning with them. So for example, if we want to have a navigation bar, we can wrap that in a nav tag. And that will tell the browser that, hey, whatever's inside this tag is a navigation bar. We also have footer, which is for the footer of a page. We have section, which can be used to isolate off a section of the web page. We have article that can be used for maybe a blog post. And we have a side, which can be used for, say, a side column on the side of a page. So with that, that concludes this video of basic HTML elements. So in the next video, we will look at CSS and how we can further style these.